The place of the hardest extreme demon has always been an elusive spot that players and creators alike have dedicated hundreds, even thousands of hours to try and take. However, most of these efforts never come to fruition, where the level never finishes development, is never verified, or is lost. Only a small fraction of these levels get to see their day as the number one demon. One of these few levels, in fact the one sitting in this position right now, is Slaughterhouse. House. It is perhaps one of the most well-known and influential levels in the Geometry Dash community. Famous for its unforgiving difficulty, dark and gloomy atmosphere, and a soundtrack that's a push to even call music in the first place. Although most people know about today's source house at surface level, what the f is that? This level actually has a long and deep history. Going all the way back to 2015, it's a miracle this level's even here today at all. So, in this video, I'm going to tell you the entire story of this level, start to finish. This is the history of Saucer House. To begin, we're going to have to talk about a player by the name of Super Kirby Kid. Super Kirby Kid was a 1.9 level creator and player, publishing a few of their creations to the servers. None of these were especially difficult, as you can see, and pretty much blended in with all other levels at the time. One day though, this player will publish a level named Challenge Club. This level was impossible in difficulty, and was a huge contrast to anything they had made before. The description of this level, however, is important. It reads, Map made by Ice Cave. A new account was created with the same name, on which Ice Cave continued to post levels of extreme difficulty. During his time making these levels, Ice Cave became friends with various impossible level creators such as Cyrillic, and eventually one of Cyrillic's creations would catch his eye. Cyrillic had ditched his progress on his latest impossible creation named Death Angel Rover. It was pretty formidable in difficulty, featuring many humanly impossible wave spams. It looked kinda cool, so Ice Cave offered to finish this level for him. However, Cyrillic said that he could not, but he was allowed to make something very similar to it. So, in 1.9, Ice Cave began working on his new impossible level named Slaughterhouse. Now compared to Death Angel River, the atmosphere of this level was much darker. The only similarities remained in the structuring and deco. It used Stalemate as a song which felt a lot darker than the ironically named Dark Angel. Alongside some other abandoned and forgotten projects, Ice Cave gradually worked on the level until the pre-drop was finished. At this time, the 2.0 update was released, an update that marked the peak for impossible levels in Geometry Dash. While a few small parts of this level were from 2.0, such as various scaled objects and some fire effects that were added because they look cool, this level largely remained 1.9 styled. It featured insanely tight wave spams, and according to C1997, the first known use of one gap cube blue orb spam, as you can see here. Fun fact, Ice Case way of testing if the level was physically possible was literally just to see if it could be made also. Back then, if it could be made also, then it was just assumed to be physically possible. After a month, the level was finished, and it was passed to Cyrillic for verification. Now here's the thing, back then, times were different. Impossible levels became insanely popular no matter their quality, and people loved to speculate about how these levels could have been verified, since there was no public use of Verify Hack at the time. Because of this, it was very entertaining for people to just watch videos or play auto versions of these levels, and see something completed that no human could ever do. These videos could all garner hundreds of thousands, even millions of views. Now if you wanted your impossible level to be on the servers and get a chance of being so popular, you had to go through one man. That man was Cyrillic. He was pretty much the only person back then who knew how to verify hack levels, and he was essentially gatekeeping it. Since he and Ice Cave were friends, it was easy for him to get Slaughterhouse published and inevitably showcased by Tosh Deluxe, actually on the exact same day, October 3rd, as Silent Circles, another incredibly famous impossible level. However, if you go and look for this original version of Slaughterhouse on Ice Cave's account, it is actually no longer there. 
This is because Ice Cave's account got hacked. The account's name was changed to Kitty of Chaos, and the stats were hacked to be top 10 on the leaderboards. The account was IP banned from the servers by Robtop, meaning Ice Cave couldn't even publish levels anymore. 12 year old Ice Cave's solution to the account getting hacked was to ask his friend, who could access the account due to having a different IP, to delete every uploaded level to the account, which hopefully meant that the hacker would lose interest in having the account and abandon it. This of course meant that the original Slaughterhouse was deleted off the servers, and was lost along with other creations such as Silent Factory. It worked! And Ice Cave eventually changed the password to the account and kept it as it was. I don't know why he didn't just do that at the beginning. He couldn't get the original Ice Cave name back because someone else had already created a new account taking it. This account, which was not run by Ice Cave at all, would go on to publish all of his levels and impersonate him for five years. Due to the lack of Twitter or Discord community back then, there was no way to tell which was the real Ice Cave, and his true identity was actually a mystery for quite some time to a general community. That account is now under the name I Am Gone. That's a whole different video. Ice Cave also had another problem, which was that Slaughterhouse was completely lost. Thankfully, many auto versions of it existed, and to republish the level, Ice Cave took this auto version of the level uploaded by Whiteboy123, removed the auto parts, and published it on mobile data to avoid the IP ban, like botting it to around 4,000 likes to get it back to the top of the search list. There are still a few remnants of this left, and to this day there's still a space after the E in the level name, which Ice Cave forgot to remove after removing the word auto from the old title. The level was well received and loved by pretty much the whole community despite its subpar decoration. Things like that just didn't matter to the community back then, you just love to marvel at the level's difficulty. Due to the level's popularity, Ice Cave spent only three days making a sequel called Slaughterhouse 2. It was very low effort and not even Ice Cave liked the level besides a cool transition before the drop. At the end it was even tagged Kitty, due to his in-game name at the time still being changed. Ice Cave didn't want to lose his name after the hacking incident, so eventually ended up making the account Once Cave? Which didn't sound very good, so he renamed it to Ice Cave OG. This was his name for quite some time, and was where he continued to publish levels to the servers. After this, Ice Cave would become a pretty normal player. He would create some extreme demon difficulty levels such as Fever Dream, and would regularly beat insane demons and upload them to his channel. However, throughout this time, he was only ever recognised as being the Slaughterhouse guy. It was the only thing that people seemed to remember him for. This was nice at first, since the level was pretty well liked and popular in the community. However, as the years went by, the level fell out of popularity, now being seen as just another low effort impossible level. Ice Cave really didn't want to be known for making something like that, and he was not proud of that as his legacy. Therefore, he decided to remake the level so that he could be known for something he could be proud of. He started work on a remake, named Slaughterhouse X. It was very similar to the original, building on the original gameplay with the same song, and it was overall the same thing but improved and made more interesting. This never made it out of the layout stage and was abandoned. His next try at remaking Slaughterhouse was named Unknown. This was a big improvement and was very different to the original and Slaughterhouse X. It had much more fast paced gameplay, a more intense song and was overall just a better level. However again, this level was also never finished. Both of these levels have been lost and no copies of them remain anywhere. After being unable to salvage the original version in any way, Ice Cave decided to start over from scratch and create a completely new Slaughterhouse a version that would come to be the one we know and recognise today. New 
slaughterhouse was completely different. It was only semi-impossible, meaning it could theoretically be beaten one day, and was much more like a normal extreme demon. The pre-drop featured slow pace, near frame-perfect cube jumps, with an over 10 second long black gap in the middle. The drop was barely possible, 4x speed wave, followed by a mini wave consistency spam, a tight near physically impossible straight voice ship part, near impossible ball clicks, an insanely difficult second wave, a straight UFO, more straight fly, another insanely difficult wave, and a final cube that matched the pre-drop. Overall, the level was looking a lot more promising, and Ice Cape began decoration on the level. The pre-drop was soon finished, with the end level later filling in the dark gap with his own part. This originally had additional gameplay, but that was eventually scrapped to make the pre-drop slower paced. Some gameplay changes were made, adding different quicks to the wave consistency and first wave to make it more playable. Clearly, this was aimed at being something beatable, and had the potential for being a future top 1. After a few changes, the level reached a state where almost everything up to the second wave was decorated. It wasn't fully polished, but it was close enough. However, at this time, Ice Cave began to face an issue. He had no new ideas for decoration, and since he didn't want the level to get repetitive, eventually lost interest in decorating the level any further. He just didn't have any more motivation. He was gonna need some help. Ice Cave turned to Iris, who agreed to decorate the part after the second wave. This didn't take long to decorate, and turned out really well. This looked very different to the decoration before the second wave though, and he needed a part to bridge the two together without it looking weird. He again asked End Level to decorate the second wave, at which the gameplay has been changed from this, to this. End level began working on the part, however, this would end up taking quite some time. In fact, nothing happened with the level for over 6 long months. When end level finally finished the part, it was bad news. The part just wasn't good enough to fit in the level. Deadlocks tried to revamp the part, but there was still no luck. Ice Cave was stuck and didn't know who to get to decorate the part. He again turned to Iris, who suggested asking River to decorate the part. River was an interesting choice, as he was essentially taught to decorate by end level, and picking him to make the part better than end level himself was not going to make him very happy. But Ice Cave decided to give River a shot at decorating the part anyway. This had to be original, it had to be unlike anything else in the level. There was a lot of pressure to make this part look good. The part was finished, and River had delivered. It was just what was needed to bridge Ice Caves and Iris' parts together. In fact, to this day, it remains one of the most recognisable and atmospheric parts in any Geometry Dash level. Progress was looking good, and the last part of the drop still needed to be decorated. It needed to be even more intense than Iris' part, which would be very hard to do while keeping the same theme. Ice Cave put out a post looking for decorators, and eventually he settled on having Dr. Cuba decorate the last part. This was again a very interesting choice, as at the time Dr. Cuba was not the same decorator he is today. Having him decorate in your level was basically a meme back then due to his strange decoration style. Ice Cave didn't care though, and had him decorate the part. The part was pretty well done, and was surprisingly too intense for the level. Ice Cave and Iris both had to revamp the part to look better. They gave Dr. Cuba their feedback, and ended up with this part. This was just right, and meant only one more part was needed to finish the level. The final cube was just like the pre-drop, and Ice Cave considered just decorating it himself. But after CD Music offered to decorate the part, he just couldn't refuse. I mean, just look at an example of their decoration. CD Music took only one one day to decorate the final part, finishing the level. After six years, the final version of Slaughterhouse had been finished. The level had at some points nearly died, but somehow it was still here, and it was very much alive.
the level was quickly merged by Wesp and was ready for recording. Ice Cave had made friends with a certain showcaser named FNM04, who recorded the final showcase, which remains to this day the most viewed 4K botted showcase of all time, at nearly 3.5 million views, even belittling the views of old Slaughterhouse showcases from the peak era of Impossible levels. Needless to say, the level was insanely popular among the community and Ice Cave was finally becoming known for creating something he could be proud of. Now it was finished, work quickly begun on the verification. The level was slightly nerfed, and it was to be verified by Doggy. Doggy started to make some progress on the level, and once he was around halfway done, he had to stop progress on the level for a few months to focus on the Extreme Demon Alphabet. Just before, Cursed had also been given a copy of the level to play, and posted runs to his YouTube channel. People began to think he was a verifier. While this was not true, it did set the foundation for there being multiple verifiers for the level. During Doggy's break, multiple people picked up the level and started to make progress on it. <laughs> After two months, Doggy was back. But due to there being so many people with progress on the level, it felt unfair to choose just one of them to verify it. Icecape decided that there would be a race to verify the level. Its difficulty? Top 1. At this point in time, Tartarus had been top 1 on the demon list for nearly 2 years. Many people had tried to dethrone it, and some came close, but none managed to top the level. People were questioning if it was even possible to verify something harder. Once the race to beat Slaughterhouse had begun, over a dozen players rushed to try and beat the level first. Some people were managing respectable runs, and were sharing them with the other verifiers. But one player was different. While others were just starting to get runs from 75 to 100, Space UK, after only a week of playing, managed to get to Rivers part from Zero, then Dr. Cuba, then the last cube. I got 92! Holy shit! Holy shit! He was just too fast, and none of the other verifiers could compete. Many of them even just gave up, waiting for Space to beat the level. He was simply at the top of his game. And on the 24th of October 2021, Space did it. Oh. <coughs> oh God. I can't fucking react otherwise I'm gonna cough so much. Oh. oh my god. Tartarus had finally been dethroned and by none other than Slaughterhouse. Ice Cave could not believe it. It had been beaten so quickly that he thought it might even have been hacked, but it wasn't. It was almost too good to be true. Only a week after its verification on the 30th of October, another level harder than Tartarus, Firework, was verified by Trick. Right after, Slaughterhouse, Firework and Arcturus were all rated at the exact same time by Robtop. Something like this had never happened before, and the entire community was shocked. People quickly began comparing the two levels, wondering which one was really harder. After a few weeks had passed, the demon list decided to place Firework at top 1. A few seconds later, Slaughterhouse was placed at top 1, and it remains there to this day. And that is the history of Slaughterhouse. As for the future, Icecape very recently finished the layout for Grief, the official prequel to Slaughterhouse, which builds on the original 2.0 version of the level, just like Slaughterhouse X did, but much better executed with Icecape's matured gameplay creating skills. As for its legacy, the sheer amount of unofficial Slaughterhouse remakes such as Cosmos and The Human Limit shows just how influential the level has been, and will continue to be for quite some time. That's all for this video, I'd really like to thank Blue and Ice Cave for helping me make this video. They are both amazing people, and I'll be linking their channels in the description. Thank you guys for watching, have a good day.